syllabus copy or have you got your lesson plan? Yes. Huh? Yes or no? Yes. yes. So as for syllabus and as for lesson plan, what I am supposed to teach you? As for your schedule? Yes. RDT. RDT. Yes. Huh. You have lesson plan, yes or no? Yes. So what is today, what, what date is today? 7th. So on 7th what? The topic has been mentioned and the lesson plan. No one has it. Back to P1 artificial chromosome. P1 artificial chromosome is the topic title of your lecture today. Huh? Is this? I don't know. Your teacher, but your teacher told me. Genes and isolation of genes. Is that true? Who is your thing? See what is there in the syllabus. Just check it. What I learned from your teacher is the gene and methods of isolation of genes. That's what I think to know. In this topic is mentioned, is mentioned in your syllabus or in your lesson plan. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Very good. So that means I'm supposed to teach to me genes and methods of isolating genes. Who can tell me? What do you mean by gene? I will go one by one. Huh. What is what is this gene? You know me, you had introductory molecular biology, yes or no? And also genetics. So you have this fundamental you know. Okay. Yes. What is your name? Nancy. Nancy will share. What is gene? which isolates the gene. Okay. I'll write all the definitions. Which isolates the gene. Which isolates the segments of gene. Okay. Which isolates the segments of gene. transferring the traits or character. Isn't it? Very good. Very good. Come here. This is this. So what is this? Is not only a segment of this. The G is defined as a 
sequence or a fragment or a segment of his DNA which encodes what? Certain proteins or which is also called unit of inheritance. That is the trait. Isn't it? This is called gene. So why you are afraid to tell? Now, what is this DNA? You must have learned that I am asking few basic questions for all of you because I want to know. Now, we know gene is made up of what? DNA. And which is encoded or which encodes what? Proteins. Also inherit the traits or character, either phenotypic or genetic. Very good. Now, what is DNA? DNA has the information. Every time you will tell me your name because I want to get introduction to all of you. I also want to learn something from it. Huh? Yes. DNA is a genetic element or a, uh, material passes information from one generation to the next generation. Isn't it? Now, somebody told DNA, uh, DNA is nothing but the nucleotides, sequence of a nucleotides. Then somebody told double standard strand. Isn't it? Right. All the information is right. Only thing is that you should be coming forward to tell me the answers. Like say, put those sentences again together and you will come to know what is DNA. DNA is a genetic element. DNA is a double element strand. DNA is made up of basically four nucleotides essentially what? DNA, nine, one, nine, five, nine, seven. Isn't it? And then of course, it has the phosphorylester backbone and link those two strands are joined together by a bond called covalent. Isn't it? This is very simple. And then DNA is present in, in the eukaryotic cell, it is present in the nucleus, whereas in the case of prokaryotes, it is in the cell, naked DNA. Isn't it? It's not, it's not housed or composed in a specialized structure. Therefore, it is open. Now, there are varieties of DNA. Perhaps you might have learned genomic DNA, extra chromosomal DNA. Or DNA. What is this extra chromosomal DNA? Alignment. Very good. It's so all of you. So, this is essentially all about DNA. And then uh, you perhaps again know what joins to whom. Adenine joins to thymine. And cytosine to thymine. And 
what are those adenine and cytosines? What is the difference between the purines and pyrimidines? The difference between the purines and pyrimidines. <coughs> Binds with pyramids, uh, uh, that is, uh, See, when I ask questions, you should listen to question carefully. You do the same thing while you write the answers. If the question is asking you what is the difference between purines and pyramids, you are supposed to tell the difference. Like purines and pyramids are the carbon beans. In one case it is 5, in another case it is 6 carbon. That is the difference. So you should be able to tell the difference. Okay. Now, so this is all about gene. Now, gene, how many, do you know what is the, uh, you should know, and you perhaps already known, what is gene of? What is the size of a human genome? Yes? Size of a human genome. Hmm? You learn all this, isn't it? Three point zero times ten raised to nine base point. Isn't it? Such a huge genome. And then in that genome, there all the sequences of all the DNA get codes per protein or no? Like you have, this is the best we have, our human genome. What you have there? Is it that many number of base pairs is? So all that sequence encodes for proteins and transfers characters to individual and if so, then why we are different from each other? What happens? Mutation. Mutation. And then any other thing happens? How many pairs of Chromosomes are present in humans. Huh? Right. So number of chromosomes. How many DNA present? The chromosomes pair. One pair. So basically, two chromosomes. Isn't it? What is the difference between that? What do you know by mean by what do you mean by alleles? Have you heard this word? So why we are different from each other? Hmm? Have you heard about homologous chromosomes, heterologous chromosomes? So essentially what happens is that in eukaryotes, usually it's a diplet. You have 46 number of chromosomes, essentially 23 pairs. And those pairs are identical. However, genes are the sequence on that DNA by two nucleotides or one or two nuclear cells get different, which is called alleles, different forms of genes. Interesting pata lakta ye nahi lakta. So you have 46 chromosomes, essentially 23 pairs, identical. And then why we are different from each other? It is because of the presence of alleles. And alleles are nothing but the different forms of genes. And therefore we are different from each other. Even brothers and sisters from same parents are different. Why? Because of the expression and because of the alleles. Because what happens? You perhaps all of know. Meiosis, mitosis, and what happens in meiosis? How does the chromosome get uh, combined or um, how do you 
combination and then essentially forms a haploid cell form in eggs and meat and then again you want to get the same. So that's all about DNA and genes. Any question on this? Anything you would like to ask me? Yes, she has a lot of questions. What does that mean? Rutuja has a lot of questions. Yes. What is your name? Dragu Nandan. It's a beautiful name. Oh. So shall I say Nagabu or Nandan? As you wish. Okay, then Nagabu Nandan. That's great too. Say Nagabu Nandan. Now you ask questions to you. Yes, okay. She has asked you, not me. How mutation happens? And what do you uh, would like to ask the question to your students? How genes are isolated from Okay, that is going to be talked. <laughs> Very clever, no good and So Somebody asked, how does, what was your question? Yes. Mutation, how does mutation happen? Not my question. I question to you. Okay. If you answer correctly, fine. If you don't ask correctly, you will take all of us for what of all. Right. Very good. Very good answer. Very good. Yes. So, you got the answer of mutation. Mutation is the sudden change in the sequence of the gene or a base gene. Essentially base. And then, this mutation can occur by a variety of reasons. It could be by chemical, it could be by physical, it could be by biological. Chemical, perhaps all of you know, ultraviolet rays, sorry, physical, uh, ultraviolet rays and uh, X-ray, isn't it? And uh, chemical, there are many chemical mutagenic agents are present in the environment and the best known is the nitrosorbonidin and there are many more. Uh, nowadays, uh, even these pesticides, weedicides and fungicides also claim to be carcinogenic. Carcinogenic means Cause, can cause the mutation and leading to develop the cancer. And then there are also essentially uh, physical, chemical, and biological. Which are biological? Yes? Can you name any biological agents of the mutation? It's a hard question, it's not my question. To you, how does mutation cause? You know in molecular biology, yes or no? What is your name? Garadi Vijay. Vijay, yes. Vijay and? Sanjay. Sanjay and Vijay, wonderful. Very good team, huh? Yes. <coughs> Have you heard about transposons? So what are those transposons? <laughs> what is this? What are those transposons? jump from one place to another. Mutation. Why? Why it happens mutation? Because if you have a coding sequence and if it gets inserted, 
the functional gene will not be functioning. It will become non-functional. Essentially, it will not encode for the required protein. Or else, Raghunandan is jumping from here to there. <laughs> like what? Like transfer. No. <laughs> Okay. Why to isolate genes? Yes. <coughs> Tell again. Ah. Tell again. If we isolate some new genes from a one variety uh, to release a new variety okay. or to introduce them to other variety to release a new variety. Okay, to introduce, to develop new variety. see some of the methods of gene isolation. But first thing, why? To know about their characters, which gene codes for different proteins. Okay. Characters of protein. To know the characters. Genetically, this is diagnostic. Good. See? Very good. That's all. That's what the use of gene isolation in agriculture. These are the only things that is required. Therefore, we isolate the gene. There are many more things for which we need to isolate the gene. You are right. There are many things why we isolate the gene. To study the sequence, structure, and its function. To study the gene structure and its function. What does it mean? It means that gene is not only a sequence of a DNA. It is the only sequence of DNA. But within the sequences of a sequence, there are many sequences are unique. Unique in the sense for example, if you have a interest in isolation of, let us say, bacterial blight disease resistant genes in pomegranate, you know, you people are having nearby locations, you may be growing pomegranate, and the pomegranate gets affected by bacterial pathogen called Xanthomonas axonopolis. 
causing eye spot disease of permanent and you are interested to isolate a gene from the homogenic for disease resistance because raghunandan mentioned that to create new variety then somebody said for isolation and the study of its sequence and of course protein what kind of protein it is so genes as far as agriculture is concerned it's important to isolate and characterize genes for disease phase insect how to say yield quality season all those traits by which we can enhance the yield however genes are also important to study the genetic diversity genes are also important in the disease diagnosis somebody told like for example at one location your homogenate eye spot disease is controlled by spraying streptomycin uh, streptocycline sulfate plus copper azide chloride but at other location it may not be controlled why because there could be the presence of different traits which is not responding to the these particular antibiotics and fungicides or in chemical chemical therefore we need isolate the genes and study the genes for its variability variability of xanthomy because we cannot study using any of the techniques other than dna got it okay so there are a variety of reasons for isolating genes to study the character to study the phenotype to study the genetic diversity to use the raw dna uh, for diagnostic purposes to develop uh, the uh, racial status of the pathogens identifications of many many different traits <coughs> which are the methods methods of dna isolation or oh, sorry gene isolation dna isolation is not possible in how many of you know and which are those Like Raghunandan mentioned, the new variety. But before creating new variety, you have to isolate the gene. Yes or no? And then you have to characterize the gene. Is that is that simple? Yes. Nowadays it is simple. Yes. Tell me any method that you know. Isolating gene. You might have learned in molecular biology. No. Oh yes, yes, learn. yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay. Then tell me. To learn, tell me. Giving treatment with some restriction enzymes to break the genes. Eh? Oh, what is this restriction? Okay. Let's put your words. Then we'll tell you. Huh? She mentioned something about restriction. Do you want to say anything? Absolutely no. Shubham. 
anything in the molecular biology, any words that you know. Transformation. Again. Transcription, very good. Transfer. 
transformation. Very good. Transformation done. <laughs> Transaction okay. Yes. Okay, now voluntarily. Is anybody would like to share any word as far as the methods of Using PCR. Using PCR. Yes, yes, good. PCR. PCR. Very good. Excellent. No, you. you. <coughs> Solvent uh, extraction method. Extraction method. Anybody, any volunteers would like to say any word? Okay, why I ask, why I give an opportunity to all of you? Because my intention and my purpose of taking class with you is just to interact with you. So therefore, I selectively not ask questions, rather I randomly ask questions. If those who would like to voluntarily come and tell me any words, I'll put it here. Otherwise, others will become jealous. Oh, I'm a nature. Thank you. Yes. Anything, anyone? No. Okay, fine. So HDS method for isolation of DNA. HDS yes, yes, method for isolation of DNA. Uh, so, CTAP, CTAP method. CTAP method, okay. Now, Ganesh, Ganesh, no. Shubham has started. Now, now he got warm. Okay. Until he was quite. <laughs> well, see, all of you know the DNA was known long back, almost in the 19th century. However, the isolation method of DNA became evident in 19. 1960 okay and it is the the isolation of dna was quite successful for the, uh, i guess in 60 because in 1953 there was a revolutionized discovery made by great scientists and that Watson and Kip. They proposed double DNA structure or double DNA physics structure of the DNA. Isn't it? Watson in 1952. Before that, Rosalind Franklin, who took a X ray crystal rod, but her work was. She didn't got the credit for it. Because in science also stealing happens. So credit so That happens in science. It was actually her contribution to show that structure of DNA using X-ray crystallography. Later on, when fixed, 
Ben Gerson was about 23 or 24 years of age, and he joined as a postdoc fellow in the Crick's lab. He was a student like you and me. He thought, he looked at the surface of the he figured it out that wow, the DNA could be a double DNA and it could be like a living like structure. So he simply proposed the model. And later on, that one and a half page or two pages of paper in Science of Nature gave a big, big breakthrough in molecular biology. Later, what happened in 1970? There were two scientists, essentially. I don't remember their name. John and Kate. John Quinn. There is one more. I think John Quinn. Quinn. Quinn, Burke, and there is one more. I guess Stanley. I think Stanley. So you make it, you figure it out. But these are the two who we essentially found the, somebody told you, the restriction endonuclease, the same thing. I don't know who told you. But anyway, somebody told you, restriction So this is one that is required in the isolation. So this is felt because Cohen and Berg and Stanley who discovered uh, the restriction and the nucleases, and then essentially it was again the big breakthrough in the molecular biology and it helped for the development of recombinant DNA technology. The restriction and the nucleases. Remember, restriction and the nucleases are present only and only in prokaryotes. They are not present in eukaryotes and they are not present in other emissions except bacteria. So this restriction enzyme is nothing but the ligase. can cut the DNA. Ligase, yes, it is required in cloning, but not really necessary. Calcium chloride, somebody told, yes, it is required in the it is one of the chemical treatments for treating the E. coli cells and making E. coli cells competent for the transformation. Gene cloning is perfect work as far as the isolation of, because we are talking here methods of isolation of genes. So gene cloning is correct. Reverse transcription is absolutely correct. It is one of the methods of cloning uh, or getting the sequence. Hybridization required for many, many techniques in the molecular biology. Electrophoresis is required. The SDS method is required for DNA isolation. Otherwise, how you go with RT restriction and uh, transcription, you cannot go with ligase and calcium chloride and all that. Then, central dogma is not a required. Because central dogma is just a theory. Replication, transcription, protein That's the central thing. Transferring information from DNA to protein. So that's not it. Transduction, yes. Transduction is required. Uh, to, uh, is one of the techniques used to isolate the uh, DNA. Uh, transformation, yes. It is also required in the gloomy. Extraction method, of course, it is required in all the steps. Okay, so uh, very good. Hybridization is required. Uh, many, many things are required. And let us see uh, some of the techniques. But, but many of you are well aware of the molecular biology technique, which is good thing. So somebody talked about. Transduction. Yes, this is one of the methods of isolating the genes. Now, who told me transduction? 
Very good. <coughs> now nobody reads them. Somebody told me transaction, and now nobody reads them. I don't remember. Who told you? अरे कुनी तेरी सांगित में ना बाबा मतलब ट्रांसलेशन मुल्का में आज लोग हाँ अतः मतलब सांग हाउ डू यू आइसोलेट जीन यूजिंग ट्रांसलेशन यू मेंशन ट्रांसलेशन यस आई वी ऑल एग्रीड दैट ट्रांसलेशन इज वन ऑफ द टेक्निक फॉर दी जीन क्लोजिंग और आइसोलेशन फॉर जीन now you tell me how does it do? Done. How do you do? See, first of all, what is transit? Yes, anybody? Very good. Huh? Transcription is defined as the foreign DNA is transferred into suitable host cell with the help of vectors. With the help of? Virus. Ha, please. Very good. So transcription is essentially, we say, the transfer of, this is the foreign DNA molecule, transferring into vector cell using You can say back to the thing, isn't it? Right, very good. So, now, see, let me see. Assume that you isolated DNA, <coughs> any DNA, from this particular plant. You got the DNA. In your F and out tube. Yes? Then what you do? Then you do with restriction enzyme. What you will get? Fragments of DNA. But you do restri use restriction enzyme that you have the lambda vector of the lambda phase, the virus. Isn't it? So you put this. into this vector. You got it? Fragment DNA, randomly you insert into vector phase. The vector phase will have non this DNA. What happens is that you reinfect to the vector cells, right? You reinfect to this host the battery cells. Now, this piece of DNA is inserted into battery cell. This is battery chromosome and this is viral DNA. Now, this experiment has been very well done and proven in case of lactose positive and lactose negative. That means the lactose positive, if you infect lactose positive lactose cell with this vector, the foreign DNA get introduced. Okay? You get large number of cells, many cells. Then what you do, you again reinfect to the lactose negative lactose negative cell. Okay, this is for example lactose positive. And this is for example lactose negative. So you infected and there might be a chance that this lactose positive gene get attached somewhere of the that particular virus of the page. When you reinfect, it is possible because there are many recombinations in segregation, there are chances 
of getting lactose negative converted into lactose positive. You read more about that beta galactoside. How beta galactoside? Beta galactoside is an enzyme, isn't it? It breaks down the it breaks down the X gal on the median, in the median. And therefore you figure it out, blue and white colony. If you get blue colony, that means X gal is there. If your gene is inserted, that means X gal is not. The X gal enzyme or the galactoside enzyme will not be produced and therefore you will not get the blue colony and therefore you will get <coughs> white colony. That means you got the insect of the plasma So there is huge large number of process. I will simply go with uh, I will quickly so, I don't go through all the steps but you can see how this is let us say that cell you have the you have the beta galactosidase encoding gene in the chromosome and you have the bacterial page that passes the DNA okay this is lactose positive and then you got the infection, <coughs> then you get the yeast. Let us say, I don't have color thing, but you have the beta galactoside gene, and then some of the DNA got inserted here. Okay. <coughs> then what happens as the cells get mature? You get many, many, you might have learned these things. Lytic phase and lysogenic phase. When the DNA is inserted <coughs> in the chromosome, it is called lysogen or protein. Isn't it? The DNA of bacteria, the virus is called protein and the bacterial cell is called lysogen. Whereas when the cells get break, break open, it is called lytic phase. And if it remains in the cell, it is called lysogenic cycle. So lytic phase cycle and lysogenic cycle. So you get many, many pieces having this DNA that is which encodes the beta galactoside and also the viral DNA. So in some cases it may not. Depends. You do re infect again lactose negative cell what you've done you you have two strains available with you lactose positive and lactose negative and you want to isolate the DNA of this leaf for example you pack it into a vector called lambda that will speak from the and then package that lambda into the virus the virus will infect you will get large number of particles. That particles may contain any of the fragment. Okay. So you use this lack negative cell because in the lack negative cell you have the lactose negative enzyme. That means it does not encode for the enzyme called beta galactoside. Got it? However, one of the virus particles <coughs> infects this. and transfer this piece into the cell. What will happen? What will happen? Lactose positive. Simple. So once you get lactose positive, what it indicates? Your gene of interest is here. You got it? Yes or no? Okay, good. So this is for Basically, this is called gene So, all the techniques of gene
in closing of the uterus. So there are many more techniques, and uh, I think you may have in lectures. What time? Uh, shall I continue? Two minutes. Huh? Yes or no? Yes. yes. <coughs> So how you use RT-PCR technique for isolating and cloning the gene of your injury? Messenger army. Anybody? Yes, any word, what do you mean of messenger RNA? Yeah, 
What is the difference between TR and What is the difference between TRNA and MRNA? This is you learn in microbiology. Yes. What is the difference between messenger RNA? What is the difference between messenger RNA and DNA? Things remains the same. 
However, there are many more differences like uh, orientation of the sequence as well as there is a difference of uh, polycystron in single RNA and monocystron in single RNA. Then there are differences that you can also get poly at the end of the RNA single RNA. So that is it. Anyway, so we are talking about CDA. So what you do, you get messenger RNA. Like the same process which is different than the DNA isolation. However, you use any plant tissue for your interest protein. Okay? Then you extract the uh, total RNA, separate the messenger RNA. And once you get the separate the messenger RNA, you electrophoresis it, you excise this fragment and you get the uh, treat those messenger RNA with the enzyme someone called RD. Viewers transcriptive. Viewers transcript is DNA dependent. The RNA dependent viewers transcript is the next, which <coughs> will give you strand of DNA. So DA RNA to DNA. You got messenger RNA, you got enzyme called viewers transcriptive. So instead of DNA to RNA and RNA to protein, isn't it? Here you are getting messenger RNA and then you are getting DNA. Of course, you need enzyme called RD, which is reverse transcription enzyme, which is dependent. Now, once you get the cDNA, you, once you get the cDNA, essentially you get the fragment because messenger RNA is always in fragment. Isn't it? They are not whole genome. They are one type. There are again many kinds of uh, expressions. So you get the, the messenger RNA fragment, you separate it. Depending on the interest of your gene, you select that messenger RNA either by hybridization and probe and all that. And then you go back, use the RT-PCR, sorry, RTA, the reverse transport enzyme, get the CDNA. And once you get the CDNA, what you do is, you transform in this cell. Isn't it? First, your CDNA has to be cloned into Vector. Vector is? What is vector? Yes? Vector is a... Element circular DNA, essentially, the restriction endonuclease are used to cut it open. And then, once you get cut it open, you also cut it open. Use the same restriction and then <coughs> join that fragment in the vector. Like this is the plasmid, for example. You cut it and whatever the CDN is synthesized, like it. And then you know all the process that uh, how uh, the enzymes are cut it open by E. coli or by Michuan or Alu or Hine, Vessel, Vessel, all the restriction. Nucleases get to open, join your cDNA into the vector, and then vectors you can transform into E. coli cell. Isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. This is the piece of DNA. So somebody told me calcium chloride. And this is where the role of calcium chloride comes. Calcium chloride doesn't help you in isolation. Calcium chloride helps you in generating the competent E. coli cells by which or in DNA or plasmids can be inserted into the host cell. Yes, got it. Perfect. Okay. Once you get it this, the battle cell will multiply the copy. Yes, extract the plasmid and extract your gene of interest. This is how you can isolate the gene. So this is the second recipe. And the third one is the PCR, and I will stop here. I will stop now.
Everybody knows this. This is assignment for you. This is, I'm, I'm going to tell your teacher, don't teach PCL for gene isolation and cloning. Why? This is an assignment for you. Because you got two methods. Isn't it? How to clone what is gene and the methods of gene isolation. Got it? Yes or no? Yes. yes. So what is PCR? Polymeric transition. Who in, uh, discovered the polymeric transition? Yeah. And what are the steps involved in PCR? Yeah. 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 And what are the what are the components required for PCR? Yeah. 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 Excellent. So, if I if I give you a leaf of cotton leaf, you will be able to do extraction of DNA, amplification using PCR of a gene of interest, then putting into the vector, then vector into bacterial cell transformation. Then back to again plants. Yes or no? Yes or no? No? Who says no? Why? Yes. Back. Huh. He said no. Yes. Good. Explain why no. You know the PCR, I am going to give you pomegranate. Isolate the resistant gene. Any of the PC technique. Which technique you would like to use? Patrophage, RCDNA, or PCR. Loudly. Which technique you will use? Yes. And how you are going to develop this and pomegranate? Rabundan is very He wants to create new work. Huh? Now, which of the technique and how will you will use the technique to develop a disease resistant pomegranate for Rantamanas axonopoly? Why is for disease of pomegranate? source for the bacterial disease. 
got it. Unless you find out you have the resistance that any other pomegranate, wild species of pomegranate, which contains the resistance genes for this particular pathogen. Then you use your knowledge of molecular biology to isolate that gene and then you use that gene. It's not that easy. First of all, you have to identify a resistance source of pollen. So unless you find a trait, so what did we learn today? We didn't learn anything. The first thing is that you have to find out a trait, a protein, a character of your interest. Then isolate and then thinking of cloning and all. You got it? You shall do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.